Hi, today we've got a really good update on an early model GC8. So this one is a 9900 model, WRX STI, which comes out in those years. Now, there is a distinct difference between the WRX model and the STI model, and we'll talk about those differences in a minute. And if you're wondering what's happened on my face, well, here in Australia, we do have skin cancer problems, and at my age, I do do maintenance and servicing on my own body as well, so there you go. And let's talk about now what the difference is between an STI, because this particular car has had a really nice birthday. It's a bit of a cherry. Clients bought it recently. He's coming to us to have a good look at it, make some other small recommendations and some updates, and we're going to do a custom tune, hence the reasons why it's in the dyno room. And this particular model is actually a WRX, although it's got some STI add-ons, which is pretty cool. And you can see the body itself is in very, very good condition, but the dead giveaway that it's not an STI is it's got the non-red painted inlet manifold because if it was an STI, let's be honest, most of the time you would either give that a birthday or make sure that that was nice and red and in good condition. He's um, changed the, well the engine actually had a bit of a birthday by the previous owner before he bought it and um, went back to original factory turbo just before he bought it. We've now put an STI turbo back on it and fitted it, with an, um, fitted it back together with his uh, silicon intake which on the early models now are starting to get a bit tired. So a silicon intake is a good idea to check on your particular model. We've put a brand new airflow meter sensor in it. You can tell by the marks on the side. It's a dead giveaway to see it's nice and new because it's got a clearly identifiable green mark on the top and the uh, white numbers on the side. And of course, let's have a look at the rest of the car itself because it's the, two -door, it's the four door version. This model did come out in STI only as a two door and a four-door SDI, but only four-door WRX. So five-speed manual transmission, pretty tidy interior. This particular model actually had reasonable comfy seats um, because remember, this model was never sold in America. Um, it's got the later model STI rear wing. This is not an original WRX rear wing because it's got the additional lip. Now this is the version six. Uh, 2000 model rear wing because the difference between the STI rear wing um, version 6 and version 5 which was 99-2000 I know them really well because when they're competing in Group N in the Australian Rally Championship these were the things that the scrutineers would look for depending on what year model you wanted to run your car in and I can tell you this is definitely a 2000 model rear wing because it's got that additional lip on the back to give it a little bit more downforce but for all intents and purposes the rest of it Pretty tidy car and it's a good way to have a little bit of a look at what you can expect. Um, the STI did have different rear brakes um, as well, but on the front, the STI and the WRX shared a lot of common things. This particular car, someone has painted them red. It's got the DBA slotted rotors on the back as well as on the front. And um, we're gonna give it a, uh, a refresh. This car particularly uh, many years ago was quite, quite popular with uh, Unichips, which was an interceptor device to uh, trick the signal from the engine to the ECU and allow for adjustments of ignition and spark and uh, boost and, and fuel control. But interestingly, since then, technology has come a long way where we now have the ability to custom tune the factory ECU and we are actually removing the uni chip and putting the wiring harness back to standard so it can custom tune the factory ECU using race from technology. And some people ask us what is actually the difference with some of these interceptors. I'll give you one example on this particular car. Um, to change ignition advance and retard, you, the unit chip would delay the signal from the crank angle sensor. So um, you'd get the crank angle sensor come in at a particular position um, as it spins when the engine's operating. It would delay or advance that signal. Um, so the ECU would then change the firing um, position for advancing or retarding the spark. The downside is the same crank angle signal is also part of the ECU configuration to control when the injectors are fired. So if you use a uni chip or some of those other devices, and I'm not bagging them, I'm just making people understand because in those days they were a viable solution for a tuning device um, and they work quite well in those days, that there is other side effects that these things can positively and negatively affect. So, of course, if you advance and retard the ignition timing with Unichip on this particular device was in this car, let's be talking about 19 years ago, you would actually advance and retard the uh, firing point of the injectors as well, which then has an effect on fuel mixture, and then you'd have to go and change the fuel mixture, and you end up in a sort of a, a wrapped up circular problem with trying to solve the tune on the car. But I may note, Still in those days, 
Unichip was a very good device. These days, technology's come a long way, hence the reason why we've got some fantastic new updates and some ways of improving the car. So we'll get this car with a run-up on the dyno. We'll give it a bit of a freshen up. We'll give another summary video on how it came out at the end. But for, of course, you can get any tune like this done wherever you are in Australia through one of our partner networks near your home. Just contact us um, and we can put you in touch with them. Or you can look for someone that is using the uh, MRT logo with the RaceROM technology. But of course, you can contact us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, and um, check out our other videos. Make sure to subscribe, and we'll give you another update soon on this particular car. Bye for now.